Hey to y'all. Hey, uh, I believe it's time that we had a little talk about firearms in America, uh, especially these particular type of firearms here that are semi-automatic and uh, have capacity to hold uh, quite a few rounds of ammunition, generally 20 or 30. Uh, you know, they've been talking about uh, raising the age to 21 for somebody to buy one of these particular type of weapons. And I, I had to admit, I wondered how many of these were actually out there in the hands of people that were less than 21 and uh, I don't know that anybody really knows the answer to that. I looked up online to see how many of these type of weapons, which they call assault weapons, but I'm going to just call a, you know, a semi-automatic rifle. But uh, they said, they guesstimated there was somewhere in the neighborhood of about 3 million. And I think there's about 300 million people that live in the United States. So that means that, uh, what is that, 1% uh, of Americans maybe own one of these particular types of rifle, an AR-15 or an AR-10, or uh, I think they call them, uh, oh, what is the Russian variant there, the AKs, and uh, maybe the Ruger Mini-14s or whatever. But anyway, <clears throat> you know, when I was 17, the U.S. Army put one of these in my hands, and to tell you the truth, that's the first time I ever got to shoot an automatic weapon and uh, man it was a lot of fun. I had been around firearms since I was eight years old and uh, I had my first shotgun at eight years old and then you know collected some guns on since then and traded some out, uh, sold some to you know friends and neighbors or whatever and then bought some more. But uh, I've never in any of my wildest dreams ever thought of using any of my guns, pistols, rifles, shotguns, anything to hurt other people. Uh, I've been a, a, you know, a hunter of deer and uh, rabbits with shotguns or whatever. And uh, nowadays it's, you know, hog hunting. And these actually do come in pretty handy for hunting hogs. There's a big hog population in the, in the South United States. And this is the preferred means of uh, eradicating some of those hogs. Uh, I think there's, I can't remember how many million, but there's, there's millions of them down here. And uh, they're really hurting our, you know, turkeys and uh, our deer populations, that kind of stuff. So we got to be able to get after them. But uh, yeah, it could be done with one of these bolt action rifles. You know, you get off, you know, one shot and they run away. So it's not just terribly effective. With one of these, you might get off, you know, five or six, seven shots uh, at a big old group of sounders that's running off. But uh, anyway, that's not the, really the point of having one of these type of weapons. The uh, Founding Fathers said that you had the right to bear arms in the Second Amendment because they had seen what like King, King George the Third or something like that. I don't remember exactly what his number was. But uh, anyway, uh, they saw what an oppressive government could do to a population. And an unarmed population has to pretty much put up with what the armed government says. Now, I'm not advocating that we have some kind of, you know, take over the government and uh, have some kind of anarchy. I certainly don't want to live in a uh, society where, where it's the Wild West, basically, and then there's no government control. But, uh, you know, I started thinking, I'm 60 years old, and I'm thinking, maybe somebody that's less than 21 years old doesn't really have the mental faculties to understand responsibility. When I say the word responsibility, generally I'm talking about being able to monetarily compensate for your errors in society. Uh, somebody under 21 certainly doesn't have the means to go and pay. Uh, I don't think somebody, if they, you know, have a stray bullet ricochet at the shooting range and ends up being traced back to them and to be able to, you know, handle all those medical bills and stuff. So, and, and I'm not even sure that I do, to tell you the truth. I mean, I'd probably have to liquidate all my assets to uh, even be able to uh, come near paying any doctor bills or something like that. But anyway, I'm just not sure that it isn't such a bad idea to raise the age to 21. You know, it used to be that uh, you couldn't buy booze until you were 21 because so many kids at 18 years of age were, you know, drinking and then driving and killing somebody or killing themselves. So... Is it, you know, I mean, they could still buy a handgun, they could buy a shotgun, they could buy, you know, a hunting bolt action gun like that. Uh, 
and maybe they could, you know, even buy a gun like this, but maybe they, you know, have some kind of mechanical thing they'd have to go and get uh, undone when they hit their 21st birthday that lets them shoot more than, say, you know, five bullets or something. You know, kids that are just less than 21 years of age, they just have a different perception of the world. A lot of kids end up killing themselves suicide-wise or whatever, and it's, you know, I know it's cliche to say, but it's kind of a, a, a permanent solution to a temporary problem. So they don't really, they don't really see, they haven't been around long enough, I don't think, to really get a good grasp of, you know, their life and the value of other people's lives and stuff. So anyway, that's, we require, you know, a driver's license. You have to go take a test and prove you're proficient with a vehicle, that your, your, that your vehicle is even safe. Uh, it has to be inspected every year or something. So I don't really have a problem saying that, yeah, you got to be 21 years old. Now, you, you may not agree with that, and that's fine. Uh, this is just, you know, my video. If you want to make a video and say how you, what you think could be a solution to these school shootings, uh, that'd be, you know, good too. Or leave some comments and say what ideas you might have that would help. But I do think that uh, raising the age to 21, I think President Trump's idea on that is probably good. Uh, if that was his idea. But uh, his idea of arming teachers, mm, I, you know, that's probably fine and it's better than, you know, it's better to have a Glock uh, on your hip and be in a gunfight than to have, you know, just a number two pencil. I, I certainly would not want to go against one of these uh, with a 30 round magazine uh, if I was only armed with a number two pencil. But uh, I wouldn't even want to do it with a Glock on my hip either because, uh, you know, if you got an AR pistol now, then you're pretty matched up. I think they learned in, uh, what was it, California, those bank robbers came out with some AK-47s. It's been, I don't know, 10, 15 years back. And the, uh, the police only had little pistols that they were trying to take down these guys with shooting uh, full metal jacket uh, ARs, and that did not go well for the police department. So you kind of have to fight fire with fire. Uh, I don't know what you could do other than put up a fence uh, around it and then put an armed guard at the, you know, at the gate and with a metal detector and letting people in and out. And that's not really the kind of school we want to have. But uh, who knows with the, you know, the year 2021 or whatever, we may be at that point. I just don't know. But uh, I think we do need to actually take some measures to harden our schools. Now, a lot of people talk about, my wife said, she just couldn't support the NRA anymore. Not that either one of us are actually members at this time. But, uh, and I thought, yeah, they're so brittle, maybe they're going to break if they don't bend a little bit. Uh, and then I saw, you know, the CPAC convention, and I saw that uh, Lee LaPriere, or whatever his name is, the, the head of the NRA, got up and he spoke. And uh, he made a lot of sense to me. And I looked up, the NRA does have a program to help harden schools. They'll send out trained professionals that come out and they look at each school and say, hey, you've got a weak point here, a weak point there. You don't have a caged catch room at the very entrance of your school where you can monitor, you know, on camera who is allowed to come in and who's not. Uh, so anyway, the NRA is taking its money and putting it where its mouth is, and they are actually out at the schools trying to help them. And I want to see what other organizations are doing that. I know the police department, you know, of course, has a resource officer oftentimes assigned to a school. And, you know, I think it's, it's a terrible thing that the deputies, I think they were uh, county sheriff's deputies, that showed up at the latest school shooting and they took up positions with their little pistols and said, well, we better wait for backup. And the truth is, to go against one of these with a little pistol is kind of insane. And if a police department or a sheriff's department is asking their personnel to do that, they are just plain dead wrong. They have to be able to match fire with fire. And even way back, I thought in the old days, man, 30, 40 years ago, I thought Houston police officers kept something like this in the back of the trunk of their squad cars. And if they needed it, they could get it out and use it. So anybody that's responding to some kind of uh, school shooting or something like that needs to go in there with the kind of firepower to uh, be able to take down the shooter. So Anyway, I don't know that the answer is, you know, arming teachers or not. I, I think that's probably an intermediate step, and we should do that. Uh, but only, you know, somebody that is physically capable of maintaining control of that firearm. You can't expect to give this 
to a 110 pound little English teacher uh, or even a pistol or whatever for that matter and expect them to be able to maintain control when they got a senior you know that's on the football team or wherever that wants to you know goes crazy and wants to take it away from them you can't have that kind of thing so maybe uh, there should be some kind of you know, training, there's got to be some kind of training for the, the teacher that has the weapon. Yeah, I'll give them a bonus, that's fine, but make sure they're physically capable uh, and even test them out. You know, if they can't maintain control of their, their weapon or whatever, they don't have no business having it in the school in the first place. So, so that's something that, you know, has to be addressed. You can't just give it to anybody that says, you know, they're gung-ho little teacher and they want to have that weapon or whatever. No, I don't think so. So... But another thing they could do is harden the schools, and the NRA is going to help them do that, I believe. And, you know, the entrance, the, the school doors to every classroom should be some kind of bulletproof doors, and they, if they hear a single gunshot, there should be some kind of electronic device that releases a bolt, automatically closes that door, and, you know, locks it so that a teacher would have to eventually come over and open it from the inside. And if there was a perpetrator out in the hallway trying to get in, they could shoot the hell out of that door in the door lock system and they'd never be able to get in. Those are fairly simple, inexpensive fixes, I would say. Yeah, our school taxes, you know, are probably going to have to go up so that we can, uh, you know, implement those kind of procedures. But we just can't keep, you know, just kicking the can down the road, uh, to use another cliche or whatever, and expect this to go away. It's not going to go away. Mental health has been a problem for people since the beginning of time, and it will continue to be a problem, you know, till whenever, till the sun sets on mankind. But, uh, and I don't know, do we need some kind of mental health test? You have to take a driver's license test to go out and prove you can drive the car. Uh, maybe you have to take a mental health test. I don't know uh, if that's a good idea or not. You know, when you hit your 21st birthday, you go to, you know, some approved state psychiatrist, you take some kind of personality inventory. If you're a fruitcake, no, you don't get a gun. But if you can, you know, be a normal human being, then okay, we'll, we'll trust you with it. Uh, like I said, I think there's like 3 million of these out there. And 99.999% of the people that have them don't go out and shoot up the neighborhood or schools or, you know, concerts or whatever, uh, movie theaters. So, you know, there's a very select few bunch of people and maybe they would show up on some kind of mental health test. So I don't know what the answer is, but I do think it's time that we started having some conversations and talking about it. And uh, anyway, that's why I'm posting this video up and I encourage you to uh, post your own video with your thoughts. If you have any ideas for about how to uh, safely address uh, the school uh, shooting issues or whatever, uh, you know, be sure and, and write it in the comment section or, or post your own video. I'd be curious to see uh, what kind of ideas other people have out there. But anyway, thanks for watching and uh, everybody have a, a safe America.